All right, Shabbat Shalom, Miss Bacar. This is Maureen Medea Yahoo. This is this, this is the recorded lesson that I promised you earlier this morning. So what we're going to do? We're still doing our prayer, a new look, and we're going to specifically focus in: Are you willing to give? Part one. And we do welcome you to our recorded broadcast of Living Branch. So let's pray. Baruch Hashem Yahuwah Elohim Malach HaAlam. Told our Rabbi Father for all your goodness. Father, I pray that your favor and your mercy would be upon us. That you, Father, would regard our lowliness of heart. That you would lift us up, Father. That you would continue to show us your path. Help us to navigate, Father. Give us the things that are precious in your sight. Help us to establish prayer uh, like the pattern that we see in Scripture. We thank you, Father, and we give you all the praise, honor, and esteem. In the name of Mashiach, Yahusha, Hallel to Yahuwah, Amin. All righty, so now if you need to email me, you can email me at info at living-branch.org. So let's get this lesson started. So where does it all start? So when I started doing this lesson, the introduction, the father laid some things on me. And I said, let me walk this out and see how it works from the standpoint that he was given to me. Uh, you may not have thought of prayer in this fashion. But I'm asking you to step outside of your traditional thoughts. Where does the process start? Does it start when you open your mouth or maybe when you bow your head? It's all a mystery. And when I say mystery, we're going back to some patterns that were established and some connections. We connected last week. We saw incense, we saw the altar of incense, and we saw that mixed in with prayer. And, and whenever you saw those, you usually saw those two together. So I challenge you to see that this process start before the prayer actually is spoken. Let's take a closer look at some of the things we will be covering. Okay, so let's look at this. So this is going to be our sort of our, our model. Okay. We have here our outer court, which you have the altar of um, altar burnt offerings. Then we have the lavender or the basin for washing. And of course, this was the entrance. Then you enter in. Then there's the showbread, the menorah. Then back here, close to the Kadesh Kadeshim, what's commonly called the Holy of Holies, is your altar of incense. And then, of course, when you go back, you have the Ark of the Covenant, which has all of, uh, has the commandments, and with the cherubim, there, the mercy seat, so forth, so on. And this is just another picture of that representation, just so you can get an idea. And all the tribes that were around it. Okay. So. Where does it all start? Do you even have a clue? Well, I had never looked at prayer from this position before. But I said, I'm going to walk it out and see what the Father shows us. Okay. And what we're trying to do, we're building up to where there's an actual altar of incense and incense made. But before we even get there, there are some things that transpire. Okay. In Exodus 25, 1. And Yahuwah spake unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they bring me an offering. And every man that giveth it willingly with his heart, you shall take my offering, and this is the offering which you shall take of them. Gold. Now, notice the offering is specific. So you couldn't just bring what you wanted to bring. Because what we're when we're fashioning this prayer and when we're building 
this prayer uh, in our life, you can't take everything that you want to, to this prayer. Give you an example. Mashiach talked about they think they should be heard for their many words. Okay, so we know that vain repetitions is not what he's looking for. You can't take a worldly ideology and think that your prayer is going to be heard. Your prayer, remember last week, we talked about that if you turn your ear away from hearing his um from his Torah or his law, that even your prayer becomes an abomination. So your prayer has to bring forth the fruits and the treasures of Torah. You have to pray scripture. So, so this is very specific what he says, gold, silver, brass, blue, purple, scarlet, fine linen, goat's hair, ram skin dyed red, badger skin, shittim wood, or for the light spices for anointing oil and for a sweet incense. Oxen stones, uh, stones to be set in the ephah. Onyx, excuse me, stones, stones to be set in the ephah and in the breastplate. Let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them according to all that I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle, the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall you make it. So I want to emphasize again, when we pray, there, there can be a tendency for us to put so many ideologies in there, but your prayer has to be based on the hearing of his Torah. And that's what's going to make your prayer effective. And I'm encouraging you to look at this in a different fashion. Because traditionally we've been taught, you know, hey, just go boldly to the throne of grace and you'll find help. You know, but there's a way you have to go. If you're if you're a sinner, you go in repentance. If you if you in the walk and you've established relationship, we want to help you properly build your prayer life, so that it is a reflection of Scripture. Okay, now let's look at the word for offering, teruma. It's a present. Okay, so this is not. You know, one of the things you give it and then you take it back. It's a sacrifice, a tribute. It comes from room to be highly, to be high actively, to rise or raise. So who are you raising? Who are you exalting in this offering? Remember, he said it was his offering. So when you bring it, this is what you're bringing to him and you're bringing this to build the things necessary in your life so that you can have the necessary stations in your life to make your prayer effective. Okay, now I thought it was interesting because we noted he said willing. This is something you have to be willing to build. Many people don't want to build this because it takes so much sacrifice. Sometimes it, it takes pain um, because you thought it was easy, but things don't always fit in place like you thought they would. And now you have to make adjustments. Some things you have to take out. You built your prayer life before and you added some things that weren't necessary or that he didn't call for. So time to tear that, tear that down and, and build from scratch because you want your prayer life to be effective. Okay. And that word often to Ruma, they've often um, in the 
Lexham Analytical Lexicon of the Hebrew Bible, they use the word contribution. It's a voluntary gift made to some worthwhile cause as a money or service or an idea. Now, I like um, also what the Hebrew Aramaic Lexicon of the Old Testament said. The meaning of the subset is something handed over once and for all. So, in other words, when they gave the offering, like I told you, the offering became his offering. Okay, now, just some other um, tidbits from the Dead Sea Scrolls. Teruma often occur, uh, occurs some 25 times in the Dead Sea Scrolls, often in a figurative, spiritualized sense, since the rituals of the sacrificial cult could not be performed at Qumran. Now, we're just reading what it says, uh, so don't worry, don't get all upset when they use the word cult. And therefore had to be reinterpreted. Several texts speak of the offering of the lips. According to 1 QS 9, 4 through 5, this offering is like the pleasing aroma of righteousness, similar to this usage in the manual of uh, discipline, is the expression offering of the tongue. In Psalms of the Sabbath sacrifice, okay, in such context, Teruma is best translated offering of praise. So what I'm trying to help you to see is that what we're building here, and Maury Lamont, please go back and watch his, um, his Torah portion that he did on the tabernacle, where he's showing you your mind. And this is where we're building this. Because if you haven't taken the necessary steps, your mind will not be ready for prayer. If you haven't brought the necessary material, your mind will not be ready. And you haven't put that necessary material from Torah in your mind, your mind won't be ready for prayer. So notice the offerings, gold, silver, brass. Blue, purple, scarlet yarn, fine twine linen, goat's hair, um, tan ram skin, goat skin, acacia wood. They call it shim wood. Oils for the lamb, spices for anointed oil and fragrance and fra uh, fragrant incense, onyx stones, stones for setting for the ephod for the breastplate or breast piece. So I want to emphasize willingness. Are you willing to get those things necessary to build your prayer life in a fashion according to Torah? Or are you stubborn and going to shortcut it? What are you going to do? If you have a willing heart, it means everything. Because a willing heart will seek the proper things. It won't shortcut like many people do. And build this thing right. Exodus 25 verse 2. Speak unto the children of Israel that they bring me an offering. Of every man that giveth it willingly with his heart. You shall take my offering. That word there is the uh, willingly is Nadab, Nadab, to impale, hence to volunteer as a soldier, to present spontaneously. So you didn't think about it. You didn't give him secondhand stuff, but you're giving him the best. You're giving him the best of your stones, you're giving him the best of spices, you're giving him the best of everything. It's spontaneous. It's not even a secondary thought. You don't even have to go through the thought process. He automatically 
gets the best. And that's how you're going to build this effective prayer life. Now, the next thing, now the, I'm using this for illustration purposes only. Because there, some of us are called for different phases of types of prayer. And sometimes we don't often get that. And, and what you have to do is understand. And, and we'll talk more about this later on. What did he give you the, uh, the skillfulness in prayer? What portion was it? What did you fashion? Okay, so Exodus 35, verse 10. Let every skillful craftsman among you come and make all that Yahuwah has commanded. The tabernacle, its tents, its covering, its hooks, its frames, its bars, its pillars, its bases, the ark with its poles, the mercy seat, the veil of the screen, the table with its poles and all its utensils, the bread of the presence, the lampstand also for the light with its utensils and its lamps and the oil for the light and the altar of incense with its poles and the anointing oil and fragrance incense and the screen for the door at the door of the tabernacle the burnt the altar of burnt offerings with its grafting uh, of bronze its poles and all its utensils and basin its stands the hanging of the courts its pillar its bases the screens for the for the gate of the court the pegs of the tabernacle and the pegs of the court and their cords the finely um, worked garments for ministry in the set-apart place and the set-apart garments for Aharon, the priest, and the garments for his sons and for service as priest. Now, I just want to take you some other places. I'm going to look at this in the, here's the King James rendering, but I'm going to, rent, I'm going to read it to you in the, ESV. Exodus 28.3 You shall speak to all the skillful whom I have filled with a spirit of skill that they make our own garments to consecrate him for my priesthood. I want you to catch the filling of the spirit. And behold, I appoint with him Oholaab, the son of Ahash um, Samach of the tribe of Dan, and I have given to all able men abilities that they may make all that I have commanded. So I'm, I'm just want you to see this. Uh, Exodus 35:10. Let every skillful craftsman among you come. And make all that you who has commanded. So he if if your if your heart is willing and you're gathering all this stuff, this is an area of prayer that you have to build and allow him to help you fashion. So my prayer is he give me the skill set to build an effective life through his spirit. Because you, you, you can't get around the Ruach HaKodesh. And prayer is not limited just to men. Prayer is for all of us. Because everybody had a part to play in the gathering of the material and what was contributed to the tabernacle. Look at Exodus thirty-five twenty-five, And every skillful woman spun with her hands and they all brought what they had spun in blue and purple and scarlet yarn and fine twine linen. Hallelujah. Okay, and then the final scripture you're going to read is Exodus 36, verse 1. Baziel and Oha Liab and every craftsman in whom Yahuwah has put the skill and intelligence to know how to do any work in the construction of the sanctuary 
shall work in accordance with all that Yahuwah has commanded. So this is our starting point, our offering. What are you willing to offer when it comes to prayer? Are you willing to give your time? Are you willing to go in the scriptures and, and research prayer and look at examples of prayer? Are you willing to find out where you fit in and are most effective at prayer? These are things we're going to walk through and hopefully get you to a point that you are so willing, um, man, that it, it, it's just you can feel the Ruah because you want to be able to pray and be effective. So Ms. Bacar, let's pray. I know it was a short lesson, but this lesson has more meat than you can imagine. You might have to watch it twice to really get where I'm going because we're building <clears throat> a prayer life that's going to be effective. So let's pray. Baruch Hashem Yehuwa Elohim Malak HaAlam Father, I pray for my Miss Bacar both near and far. I pray, Father, that you watch upon us, that you watch over us as we're building this prayer life, that you would help us and show us what to put in and what to take out. We want to build it according to the patterns we see in your tabernacle. We want it to be pure. We want it to be effective because you told us through Yaakov the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So help us, Father, through the righteousness. And we know our righteousness is when we guard Torah. Help us to put those things in place so that our prayers would be effective and we can be heard. We say, Toda Rabbah, for all that you do. In the name of Mashiach, Yahusha, hallelujah, we give you praise. We thank you for every trial and every tribulation. We thank you for everything that you've allowed to come our way. Nothing is by chance. We know, Father, that is no, no shadow of turning in you. All good things come from above. And we give you praise in all things. In the name of Mashiach, Yahusha. Hallel to Yahuwah. Amen. All righty, Ms. Bacar, just, you know, Make sure you use the tools that we have for you on the Living Branch website. Just look under the category Hebrew and you'll find the application there that you can use. Okay. Um, the Hebrew Foundation Resource Center is there for you. If you want to order books, Dead Sea Scrolls is there. Um, make sure you get your copy. Okay. Pesach is going to be coming quick. So make sure that you check this out and that you get the Hebrew Ten Commandments and also the Hebrew Passover story to train and teach your children about Yahuwah's word. Okay, if you haven't already, join our bookmark or witnessing team. You can go to www.bm.hebrewfoundation.org, fill out the form, and I'll get some bookmarkers out to you. Now, when it comes to giving, I'm seeing the easiest way because uh, I'm thinking about phasing my online donation out. I'm thinking about phasing it out um, just because of the fees they charge and people have difficulty with it. So Cash App seems to be the easiest way to give. Also, PayPal is a good way, and you can also do it by mail. But until we phase it out, if you do want to still use it, it'll take you to this page. So you can use an online giving tool to use. But Cash App seems to be easier for most of our um, watch viewers. So if you desire to give, that would be a good way to use it. You can download it on Android. You can also download it on your Apple phone or your iPhone. Okay, so... We are past our introduction. We're, we're, and we're, are you willing to give? Part one. So if you need to email me, you can hit me up at info at living-branch.org. 
And I pray that you have a wonderful Shabbat. This is Moray Madad Yahu saying unto you, make this the best Shabbat Shep. <laughs> make this the best Shabbat ever. Shabbat Shalom.